to the um, sampling of the Humane Society uh, single barrel cast strength bourbon bottle. So this is a really awesome program that we have with Bluegrass Distillers, and we have just been so excited to partner with the Lexington Humane Society. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit today about um, this program, and then we're going to go ahead and um, talk with Ashley about what fun, um, cool things the uh, Humane Society has going on in upcoming projects. And then we're going to go with Jacob, and he is going to uh, walk us through the tasting today of what this bourbon tastes like and what we we can expect from it. Um, and then we'll talk about how you can get your own bottle if you haven't already. So uh, Maggie, why don't you go ahead and tell us about this program? Yeah, so this is our second time working with Lexington Humane Society. Uh, the first release we did was back in March, right before everything shut down for COVID. I think it was like March 6th, so 10 days before everything <laughs> shut down. Um, that initial release that we did was a 90 proof weeded bourbon. Um, the bottle this time is a little bit different. You can see we got the pup with the Santa hat on there and it's at cast strength at 97 proof. And uh, when we get to Jacob, I'll let him talk about, you know, why it cast strength, it's still a relatively lower proof. Um, but this is part of our philanthropy barrel program. So those of you who bought the bottle back in March are probably familiar um, with the program. Since you already have a bottle, those of you who have not might not uh, know how this works, but your bottle, every bottle that you purchase, um, currently it's a $60 bottle because it's the cast strength. Um, so we're going to get less bottles out of the barrel and we are going to donate $25 of every bottle sold to the Lexington Humane Society. So last time we did this back in March, we raised over $4,000 on bottle sales um, from this release. We also do a 10% of all additional sales on um, the 18th We'll go to Lexington Habitat as well. Um, and that's just a fun way for us to give back to local organizations. Uh, the Humane Society rocked it last time. So we were thrilled to do two in one year with them. Um, and I think you all are gonna be really pleased with, with the products or with this product. The last product was great, but this product is awesome as well. I'm really excited about this as you can yeah, see. And you can't pass up that bottle. <laughs> Candy Cane is very excited. So she is one of the thousands of animals that you will help this year um, with your purchase of the bottle. The $25 goes to the animals back, back to the animals here at the Lexington Humane Society. And then of course, just like Maggie said, um, an additional 10% of all purchases on uh, this coming Friday will go back to the animals here at Lexington Humane. So Candy Cane will be available for adoption very soon. We have lots of kittens and lots of animals looking for forever homes. Curious guys. So we certainly appreciate your support. And thank you, Bluegrass Distillers, for allowing us to partner with you on this. Absolutely. It's been a joy working with. I know I personally love helping the animals. That was my first ever job was working in the in a, in a uh, humane society. So anytime that we can all any, you know, offer any help to give back to the animals, I'm all for it. Um, just to remind everybody and I'll remind everybody again, but yes, all purchases Friday, 10% of all sales Friday, not just this awesome, super cute puppy bottle, but any purchases Friday go back to the humane society 10%. So if you want to wrap up some Christmas shopping, which we'll talk about that a little bit at the end, um, Friday would be the perfect time to do it. So Jacob, um, do you want to go ahead and walk us through the uh, tasting of this bottle? Yeah, sure. So I have my own bottle here that I picked up this morning. I also have right here one of our rocks glasses. Um, as far as tasting bourbon, tasting bourbon goes, you tend to want either a rocks glass or a Glencairn glass. I saw Maggie had a Glencairn in her hand. Uh, if you want to come in and get one of these Friday, like Selena said, 10% goes back to the Humane Society. So that might be a really great option. Um, but go ahead and open up our bottle and fill our glass up just a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is actually look at the bourbon, not taste or smell it. And what you want to do is you kind of want to take it and put it against a background. Um, I have a sheet of paper here. Um, kind of put it against a white background and that'll give you a good look at like the color of it. Um, this bourbon I found had like a nice amber or deep copper color. Um, after that, that'll kind of give you a idea of its age. It's not straightforward or anything, but um, 
it's just one of the things that you can evaluate along with the clarity of the bourbon uh, and if there's any sediments or the viscosity of it. Um, you're then going to want to nose the bourbon. And in order to do that, you're going to start kind of swish it around a little bit. That'll start it up, get some of those compounds that evaporate into there, into there, um, and slowly raise it towards your nose. As you do so, you'll get an idea of how intense um, the nose is on it. Uh, just by how far away the glass is when you start to smell it. Um, if, it if your glass is kind of like out and away, it's pretty intense. Like I can smell this bourbon right now. It has a pretty intense nose. If it took me until I got like right here, it would not have as intense a nose. Um, and from the nose, you can get a lot of different things. You can start to get um, how old the bourbon is, different, uh, different tastes and smells that are going to come up later. Um, a lot of what you're looking for is uh, act actually represented on these things we call flavor wheels. Um, you can easily print these off from online. That's exactly what I did earlier today. And the idea that you're going with these is that you kind of start in the middle, find a note or something in the bourbon, and then work your way out. Um, so by doing that, one of the big things that comes up in this bourbon for me um, is a very fruitful nose. It has a large apple kind of smell to it, a little bit of pear. pear. Um, and then I also get a lot of caramel, a lot of butterscotch, um, some other candied smells, and then some spices, um, a little bit of leather, but also uh, some clove. I wrote down earlier that I got a little bit of cinnamon in as well. Um, and you kind of want to just go through and slowly smell it. Um, it's very helpful to go and um, kind of relate the smells that you're getting in a bourbon uh, to memories you have because uh, sensory uh, smell especially is closely tied with memory. Um, so for me, especially uh, with a bourbon like this that has a nice apple smell, nice caramel smell, I remember <laughs> going to like a state fair where you can go and get like a caramel apple. That's what this bourbon reminds me of specifically. Uh, and since this is a single barrel bourbon, uh, it's going to be unique as, even from the other bourbons that started out. Uh, it, we barreled, I think it was four barrels on this day. I looked earlier today and went to our inventory sheet and saw when this barrel was barreled. It was uh, July of 2016. We bottled it this week. So it's about... Um, a four year, three month and a half bourbon. Um, and even the barrels that were barreled with the same uh, new make bourbon that day will have a different flavor just because the uniqueness of from barrel to barrel. Uh, but for this bourbon in particular, I get a lot of an apple smell. I get vanilla, I get honey, I get a lot of caramel, a little bit of butterscotch, um, a little bit of pear. And then some uh, spices that are like uh, some clove, some cinnamon, um, those kind of more fruity flavors I, or aromas I was talking about uh, mostly come from the yeast, actually. So yeast are used in the bourbon production process. They're actually the things that make alcohol. We basically feed them sugar that we get from the grain, and they eat that sugar and produce alcohol that we then distill, concentrating the alcohol and put into a barrel where uh, the alcohol will adopt flavors and aromas from the, the barrel, and um, as well as color. Um, but all of those fruity kind of flavors I was or aromas I was talking about come from uh, the yeast themselves. They produce these compounds called esters as they ferment, and that gives a lot of fruit flavors. Um, all of the kind of like spices and more desserty notes would actually come from the barrel. Um, so that clove, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of cinnamon, all come from the barrel woods. They're called oak spices. Um, and then you have the vanilla, the caramel, the butterscotch are actually from caramelized wood sugars that are present in the barrel. Um, as uh, you may know, uh, bourbon barrels are charred on the inside. We use a number four char. It's the highest number char that's available uh, from cooperages. We want uh, having a little bit more char allows us to get uh, more bang for our buck in that aging period. Uh, there's more compounds that give you these flavors present, so more of them make their way into the bourbon. Um, but 
during that charring process, the sugars that are just naturally occurring in the wood are caramelized by uh, the flame that they use when they're charring the barrel. And that produces these flavors, um, any kind of like sugary or desserty flavor along with vanilla. Vanilla is actually really interesting. Um, when you break down lignin, which is a com structural compound in wood, uh, it goes and transforms into vanillin, which you might be able to tell just by its name alone, uh, it gives you a vanilla flavor. Um, and I pick up a lot of that in, bur in this bourbon as well. Um, but you're going to take those aromas. Those aromas will give you a lot of uh, indication on flavors that you'll taste. And what you're going to do next is basically uh, take one small sip, let go around your mouth a little bit. Um, that acclimates uh, your taste buds to the, the alcohol. And then you take a second larger sip and from there on, your taste buds have kind of gotten over the shock of the alcohol and it allows you to taste the, the flavor a little bit deeper. And you should start to taste, um, you should start to taste a lot of the same aromas that you get uh, from the bourbon. Um, the, your sense of smell and taste are very to closely tied together. Um, by smelling the bourbon, you can kind of get an idea of what the bourbon is, will give you as far as flavor goes. Um, and of course, everything I said, you may or may not pick up on. Uh, taste and smell is very subjective. Everybody is going to taste something different. Um, but there's really no wrong or right answers. Me and Maggie might uh, taste something completely different. And that doesn't mean that it's not there. That just means that we have a different set of taste buds and so for a different set of sensory, um, uh, sensory, uh, our nose is just different. Um, and then this is a 97 proof bourbon. Uh, it's cash strength. So uh, it's been aged for four years. Uh, it actually started out into the barrel at 108 proof when we came off the still with it. Uh, when you age a bourbon, it will, um, the water and the alcohol that's present in the bourbon will actually evaporate at different rates. And so you'll have a slightly different proof um, at the end of the aging process from the start. So this bourbon started out at 98 proof, but because of the environment the barrel was in, uh, we had some of the alcohol evaporate faster and then we had the water and it w went down to 97 proof for our final cash rate product. Um, and when we're bottling these, uh, some people like to use a coal filtering or a charcoal filter method. Um, we don't really want to do that. We find that if we over filter our bourbon, um, it tends to strip a lot of the flavor and a lot of the color out of the bourbon. And you're going to have a very clean taste, um, but it's not going to be like an incredibly flavorful taste. So we want to have all that flavor preserved through the filtering process. Um, so we actually just filter with a single paper uh, filter, and we're literally just trying to strip uh, the charcoal from the barrel without stripping any of the flavors. Um, and we're really wanting to preserve, especially with a cash strength single barrel product like this, we're trying to give you the flavor that was in the barrel is what ends up in the bottle and that you can taste that barrel and taste that bourbon uh, kind of in its most pure kind of it's, uh, it's similar to if you were to go into a Rick house yourself and draw um, a sample of the bourbon with what we call a thief and taste it for yourself. We want to provide you that experience at home. Um, so yeah, that's what I get out of this bourbon. You might get something different, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if you got something similar too. Yeah, I think, you know, everything that you said, Jacob, I'm, I'm getting as well. Um, you know, one thing about this bourbon that I like is I think it has a very silky mouth feel to it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you got that too. And it, it, the, the flavor really sits on the tongue. You don't really feel that mm -hmm. hug going down, you know, it's a cast drink product, but it's not super high. So I think that the flavor, you know, is, is really good. Um, it's smooth. It doesn't have that long mm. finish that some, sometimes some of our bourbons can have, um, you know, and, and like you mentioned, everyone's got a different palate, um, especially, you know, your genetic makeup, um, you know, 
I'm sure your family members are going to have a similar palate to you. So, you know, Jacob, I'm sure you like drinking, you know, with your dad or your grandpa or whoever, because you'll have that similar palate versus me being a female who grew up in a different family, um, maybe in a different part of the country or part of the state, you know, there's so much that goes into it. So, you know, Jacob, I think you made a good point of what is, um, you know, right to me could be wrong to you and so on. But, you know, what you got to kind of trust your nose and your palate. And um, I, I just think that's a good point for everyone out there to remember, you know, if you're tasting something completely different, whatever you taste is right. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we might direct you into something, but, um, you know, just, just trust, trust your mouth, trust your, your nose and your, your taste buds. So. Yeah. And a lot of it comes down to practice. Like um, there's definitely some people that are very genetically gifted um, and to compare to others and have a very sensitive nose. Um, but a lot of it is just down to you going out and getting those experiences where you're tasting different bourbons, but also you're tasting like, you know, go and eat some apples, go and try some different caramels, like get these, this exposure um, two different things. Uh, one thing that is always really sticks out in my head is if I ever encounter like a bourbon that has a kind of like a musty note, I always think of like my grandpa's barn that uh, would stay closed up for quite a little bit of time between opening it. And it had that kind of like wet earthy smell. Mm -hmm. And some people might really like that. Some people might not. I like a little bit of it. Um, a little bit goes a long way along with like a kind of like a hay grass, but um, it's kind of about having these experiences and then you can connect those experiences to the senses that your nose provides you. Um, and that's kind of one of the magical things about bourbon because uh, it's kind of that, I guess, ratatouille effect. You go and you taste a bourbon and it's not just the flavor that's right in front of you. It brings up old memories, some that might be like really dear to you. Definitely. Selena, you're muted. Let's try. Okay. How about there now? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so thanks, thanks for walking us through that, Jacob. That was awesome. Um, anybody who's watching this video and um, tasting, if you taste anything different, that's pretty cool. You know, maybe let us know um, in the comments below what you think. So this is pretty neat, this little video that we put together as this virtual tasting in, uh, before COVID, we might have like an in-person thing. We hope in the future to get back to that, but um, this virtual tasting is still pretty cool. Uh, we do have other bottles available for purchase. So if you're trying this and you're like, hey, this is pretty awesome, it would make a perfect gift. Uh, you can visit us um, in, in store or online and purchase it. We also have curbside pickup available. And again, $25 from every bottle sold goes back to the Humane Society. So that is an awesome way to give back, especially around the holidays. Um, and we also have gift wrapping available, which um, let me grab a box, it's super cute. It would go really well with this super cute puppy bottle. I mean, how cute is this box? And it has a bow that um, comes with it. So. Uh, like I said, perfect gift. There you go. There's your Christmas gifts ready to go. Um, Ashley, is there anything you'd like to add about uh, how, other ways to give back to the Humane Society or any special projects that you have lined up from uh, this fundraiser? Yes, thank you so much. Well, again, thank you all again for everything that you do for LHS and the animals. Animals like Candy Cane here, she is, I don't know if you've heard, but during the whole tasting, Jacob, she was purring and I'm um, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to, I have, I'm going to get a bottle and take it home. Um, so I'll have to keep, um, I'll have to let my husband know about it, but I'm also going to have to let him know about her because she is just a sweetheart. So any sort of um, donations through purchasing a bottle for um, Bluegrass Distillers or um, any other any other holiday gifts, you know, we have everything that you're looking for um, to give that cert, that special someone 
You can name an animal in someone's honor for a hundred dollar donation. You can purchase a bottle of bourbon for um, $60 and $25 of that will go back to the animals. You know, we care for thousands and thousands of animals every single year, animals in our community and surrounding communities. So because we have such a caring and compassionate community, we are able to save more lives. We're able to help animals, not only in Lexington, but we're able to help animals in Pulaski County. We're able to help animals in Knox Whitley. We are able to help animals in Louisiana. We are able to help animals in Florida. Um, we rely on our phenomenal community to help us and um, take care of playful little guys like this gal. And she, I don't know if you saw it earlier, but she's very playful. Um, she took a chunk out of my face a minute ago, <laughs> but she, um, uh, you know, we have so much fun and we are, we have so many animals looking for forever homes. So um, they are homeless, but not hopeless. They are hopeful and hoping for a home for this holiday season. So thank you for your purchase of our bottle. And um, hopefully next year you can come in and, and take a tour of the facility and meet some of the animals available for adoption. Great. And Maggie, is there anything you wanted to add before we close out this uh, virtual tasting? Um, no, I, you know, thank you, Ashley, for hopping on. Um, and, you know, Jacob and Selena for, you know, being a part of this as well. It's so much fun, um, you know, being able to give back to the Humane Society um, bottles. We have 175 total um, of, available, so they will run out. So if you're watching this video and you bought one bottle and you love it, um, get online, give us a call and see if we have any more left because um, we will run out. Um, I just don't know how long that will be. So definitely, you know, if you're thinking about picking up another, don't hesitate, um, do so. You have until uh, the bottles either run out or January 8th to, to get that order in. So keep that in mind, um, but that's, that's about it. And this has been a lot of fun. Um, always fun drinking bourbon and you know, yeah. Jacob, great job, you know, walking us through everything. Cause not, you know, there's a lot of people who might've gotten this as a gift who don't drink bourbon. So thank you. Yeah. And there's a lot of right ways to drink bourbon, but um, there's no wrong ways. The best way to drink bourbon is however you enjoy it most. Um, so I would definitely encourage everybody, uh, if you come and pick up one of these bottles, um, the way I personally enjoy bourbon the most is with family and I would definitely take it home with you on Christmas share that with your family and maybe get a new family member while you're at it right that's right all right well um thank you all again and this concludes our virtual tasting again those bottles are available until January 8th or until they run out first come first serve which I'm sure they will because they are so cute the little puppy on the front is just adorable um and like I said Friday uh total purchase 10 percent goes back to the Humane Society and 25 dollars from every bottle purchase does go back to help the cute little critters so if there's any if there's nothing else um thanks and have a happy holidays Thank you all Thank so much. You. Happy holidays.